Today we're going to be conquering a massive chunk of the world as Mamluks while still being ahead of tech. Yes, one year counts as still being ahead. We have Anatolia ideas as well as the Mongol mission tree. In just less than 90 years. We start off by giving out religious diplomats, strong duchies, placating Syria once, then hiring a diplo rep advisor as well as focusing admin which gives us claims on most of Anatolia because it makes Syria loyal. We then hire the free company as well as build four of our special units. We build four of our special units because it completes a mission which gives us claims on Tunis area. We then sort out our alliances allying Albania, Ejam, Medina and Genoa and revoking our guarantee on Cyprus. We then go to war with Ramazan on the 11th who allied Dulkadir. A month later we go to war with the Ottomans and AQ. I've never seen a game where Ottomans don't go and siege down Albania first, which means you can greed siege the rest of the forts. We peace out Ramazan. Getting this province early is good because you can start coring it, which means you can core AQ and Karaman a lot quicker than you would otherwise. We was having bad sieges this run and the Ottomans were having good sieges, so we had to back off from the straight and just focus on Anatolia for now. Considering we have more troops in Anatolia, we might as well go to war with Karaman now. We then peace out AQ, because our province in Ramadan's already finished coring, we can fully core AQ straight off the bat. Once you get enough relationship with Medina, you can vassalize them, completing the missions, giving you claims on the whole of Arabia. You can complete this mission a lot faster by insulting the rivals, sending them gifts and so on. When you ally Genoa, there's a chance that the Ottomans will get mill access through Crimea and come round into Anatolia. Now they're in Anatolia and mill tech above us and I have two options to either piece them out or waste all my manpower fighting them. The coalition looks pretty bad but apart from Crimea and Great Horde who we can just improve with, the rest of the nations are fighting each other. After piecing out Karaman we can complete the two missions, one giving us mill power and claims on the Balkans, the other one giving us a monthly admin power to our leader and giving us claims on QQ. We then also go to war with Byzantium. The radical reforms trigger which is something you should always be trying to go for early on in your runs before you get discounted advisors. The Ottomans also go to war with Byzantium but because they just focus on sieging down Athens we can get control of the rest of the provinces. We get the event to take the province off Syria and it will only ruin our relations not our liberty desire so we choose to take it. We also have a core on the province which means we don't have to spend admin core in it. We peace out Byzantium, we could have vassalized them which would have brought us into a defensive war with the Ottomans but we're not too worried about that this run. After peacing them out we also release Bulgaria because we get Athens as a vessel, this means we have 5 vessels which means we can start the golden area in the next month tick. We also see if we can get any strong alliances from European nations which Venice is the only one at the moment. We then go to war with Cyprus because they have no alliance and through our mission tree we can get an extra dip blow to our leader. We then also begin expansion into QQ which Ajan won't help us out so there was pretty much a waste of an ally this run. We take the north of QQ and then we can complete the mission giving us more claims on Persia. We can then begin integrating our vassals and turn our attention to unifying Yemen. We integrate Syria with the mobbing rebels and for some reason the thought that it was on mothball. When we have a moment of peace we look to see if we can grab any more bigger European alliances. We do this because we're not expanding that way, they'll help with the Ottomans and it also gives us a fake power against coalitions. No one will help poor Tunis and we need to expand that way so now's a good time to attack. We take Diplo for our first idea group. Can never say no to free manpower. We were hoping we could threaten one for Zan to get the province but we guess not so we're just going to have to do it the old fashioned way. We ask Venice to share knowledge so we don't have to waste mana developing the renaissance. Once our true time is up with the Ottomans we can go to war with them again. We can now use Poland and Austria to do most of the heavy lifting in the war. We enable scrutinage so we can annex them during the war. One of my favourite events as a Sunni is to lose two corruption events so you can basically just get free money. Completing the following mission lets you get cloves in Cairo which is a really good trade good. After unifying Yemen, there's only a few nations left in Arabia so we might as well finish uniting Arabia. We take most of the coastline from the Ottomans but we make sure to take the state of Constantinople so we can complete this mission later.
After when we finish with the rebel spam, we then unstate everything apart from our Tunis land. We then move our capital into this specific state and culture swift to Tunis. We can then form a nation which I'm going to call Tripoli. Now before we click yes to form them, we're going to state a province in Turkish culture and we're going to culture swift to Turkish. The reason why we took culture swift to Turkish is this nation's national ideas are based off the culture group. So if your culture group's Turkish, you'll get basic national ideas of a Turkish group, which includes 20% CCR. Forming this nation doesn't change your mission tree, so now we can complete this mission, which gives us the option to move our capital back to Constantinople. We now state the Yemen culture and culture swift to Yemen. The reason why we form Yemen next is because Yemen gives you 10% CCR until the end of the Age of Discovery, which now gives us 30% CCR. We can then restate provinces and also because our capital is now in Constantinople, we can also make trade companies. We can then continue expansion as normal, but with 30% CCR instead. I need to start supporting the independence of one of Timurit's vassals because they keep unifying in my games and it's very annoying. We've been avoiding battles for the most part because most of our manpower is going on fighting rebels and attrition instead of actually fighting troops. We snake through Timurit's to get aboard with Yarkland. This is because we want to expand into the oil rats in the near future. It's 1477 and we're only just now taking our first Diplo tech, but at least it's only costing us 200 Diplo. For our second idea, of course, we're going to take admin. In the peace deal with the Oirats, we take as much of the Kalaka group, culture group as we can. The reason why we do this is because our development in our capital is already pretty high and we don't want to have to move our capital to culture switch. We can now unstate everything again and only state the Georgian provinces. We can then culture switch to Georgia after developing a few times and form Georgia. Georgia's mission tree gives us 10% CCR temporary, 10% war score against other religions temporary, siege ability and a bunch of other military bonuses. We could have also got 10% morale of armies until the end of the game if we was paying more attention to the mission tree as we did have the temple. I wasn't following the other mission trees of different countries before switching so. We then unstate our Georgian provinces and culture switch to Kalaka. We then change our tier 1 reform to Icta. Doing this allows us to form the Mamluks, but not just any normal Mamluks, the Mamluks with the Mongolian mission tree. One of these missions giving 15% war score cost but because we wasn't following the mission trees efficiently we have to wait a little while before we can actually complete these missions. With our army professionalism, our army traditions and also the temporary siege ability we got from the Georgian mission tree just look how fast we're able to siege. Not wanting to waste our temporary bonus is most important at being our border against heretics and heathens. We start massive expansion into India.
As our temporary CCI starting to run out and we have quite a bit of Hindu development now, we now take the state decision to turn into Sheik. This costs 100 prestige and true stability, but it allows us to then turn into Hindu, which costs another 100 prestige. The reason why we turn into Hindu is because it gives us 10% CCR as well as a monument, which can give another 10% CCR. Converting to Hindu causes even more rebel problems than what we had before. Considering Ming is still alive, we take the opportunity to farm ducats often through their tributaries. We can now finally complete this mission which lets us continue with the rest of our Mongolian mission tree. As I said, because of inefficiency with following multiple mission trees, we have to take this one province in what was meant to be a truce reset the wall. After quick wars with Russia and Muscovy, we can now complete the mission giving 15% war score until the end of the game. We now turn our attention to Spain as they have two monuments that we want. We signed a peace deal earlier than I would have because we're going to win the run here. I am going to bird the peace deal though as if I do continue the run I want to sign in this peace deal a few months later. Due to govcap reasons we now have less manpower and force limit than what we did in like the 1470s. This is something we can fix in time by spamming courthouses as most of our money has been going into upgrading monuments at the moment. 